Everyone, five to one sister. Yeah, the It is my favorite comedy, um, and I've never had a chance to direct it in full. And so this was a, t a moment for me to explore this interesting concept of the steampunk and how it connected with theme, but then also how it, it comes to life on stage. I think you need to look at the text and say, okay, what is that doing for the text? And I think steampunk and Twelfth Night go well together. But essentially steampunk is antique reality with some imagination. So reimagining a past time with the benefits and fantastical imagination uh, of how we might use steam technology. We know how it's been used, but this is us looking back and saying, but what if? The language is beautiful. Um, some people are frightened by the language, but once you decode it, so to speak, for actors, and once actors know what they're saying and how to say it, it's beautiful on the ear. I don't think that will ever change. You should then you should then bang the youth into dumbness. Good fun. Um, all right, so let's continue from where we paused it. He is now in some comments with my oh. lady. So we all got together, and uh, it was kind of the time for me to kind of experience getting acquainted with the text with everyone and kind of uh, solidifying my initial thoughts uh, from there and seeing how they work and how they play with others when we were just doing our sit-down meetings. Everyone in the ensemble and all of the characters are necessary. Uh, we've been rehearsing the past couple weeks with some of our actors away because they've been in on another show. Um, but I think they're all necessary. And so this week when we've had everyone, it's amazing the work that we can get done and how much more things make sense. Um, so even the smallest roles are crucial. Why? What does it give us? What does it ask us connection. to do? Connection. You're, you're relying on the people around Okay, there's I don't connection. Know. I don't know. It's the idea of like a line being dropped. You have to be able to pick it up. Ooh. 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 I pray the... Oh, shit, I knew these. Um, She's not worthy. Okay. Uh, whose flowers soon displayed had, had fallen that day. I don't know. Prizes, not quantity. Prizes, not quantity of big lands. I want you to try. It's, it's too much. I tried. Mean. No, it's good. And because as an actor, I cheat. And if so, if I get my script, then it's like, well, I don't worry about it. So I want you to try. So if you have a, a buddy outside of you and you're working online, to have them read as you. It's fine by me. I want to see those tactics working, right? Because you've got different things happening. So, that we're going to do steampunk, so all the designers took that and we kind of ran with it. The spines are meant to be sort of like an I-beam structure, so you know when you walk into the like a barn, say, you can see all the beams that hold the barn together. Um, so that's sort of what we were looking for for the industrial look. But we wanted to keep the show round because it's a comedy and we didn't want to have any sort of hard edges. And it started out as pencil on a piece of scratch paper and it turned into a drafting on an AutoCAD program. Vector works that we use to do all of our drafting for scenic design. You know, by the time the show show's ready to start rehearsing, um, the designs are done, and the designer hands them to me, and I build it. My job really is just to m take the designs that, sh that the designer gives me and make them into a reality. For instance, the spines or the kind of the uh, 
I beams, I guess is what you would call them, that hold the, the whole thing in place. Well, we don't have one big long piece, so we had to splice a piece together. And so that was kind of difficult. So trying to maintain the integrity of the design, but at the same time using uh, the smaller pieces that we had to splice together. I actually teared up the first time they put a spine on the stage. I was like, guys, this is real. <laughs> um, it made me really proud. Um, it started as a drawing and then you see it as reality. So we found uh, like seven or eight of these meters. There's like old style science meters and I thought they were pretty cool. So we pulled those to be put on the set. Um, there's other things too. There's uh, We have big containers with gauges and things on them. One of them hides a few props. Actually. I took all of these things. I pulled books and pens and wine bottles and such from the prop shop upstairs and it was my job to steampunk them to make them look like they belonged in the world that Dr. Emily Riley and the rest of the design team has created. This is um, for Olivia and in the beginning of the play she's mourning the death of her brother so she comes out she's in all black and what it is it's a bible um, and it is not a real bible it's a book that was upstairs that I covered and then added some craft gears. A couple of times, like with these wine glasses back here, these took about three times of drying. I take them and I say, eh? And she say, well, it's, it's getting there. It's almost there. So um, she definitely helped a lot. And you still got a lot of hanging to do or anything? Or are you just getting it all plugged in? It's all plugged in. Most of it's already hung, which is good. I have to go back and refocus the entire back catwalk. One of her concept ideas of how to involve steampunk throughout the show and also incorporate the audience and this entire atmosphere once you walk into the theater is through this idea of shadows and such. One part of steampunk is this aestheticness of like steam and shadows and just this physical movement in the air. Shakespeare is a show, especially Twelfth Night, that keeps going and going and movement and you have to have something visually to look at, which the set encompasses and really does a great job at, but as well as the lighting of how to just light those fine details on the set to cast a shadow that just really makes it look very big and I don't want to necessarily use the word masculine but just very like empowering if you will. How many instruments we have? Uh, roughly I'd say 130 some we're using. You can design a show uh, via a CAD program which is digitally doing everything on the computer but when it comes to physically programming each scene to make it look visually appealing and make sense and tell a story I mean, I think I spent, on the first half of the show, close to 20 hours of programming. Plus, out, next five, out, next three, out, next three, out. Next three, out. To try to make something that makes the actor look good, makes them feel comfortable, and still gives uh, the director the look they're looking for, as well as incorporating any ideas that I happen to have. With this production, there wasn't uh, too awful much room. For, I mean, I had a lot of room to play because steampunk isn't a real thing. I mean, it is a real thing, but it's not an actual genre. Um, it's not, it didn't happen, you know. It's not like Victorian England in 1887. You know, I don't really have uh, too many boundaries, which is a lot of fun. The hat uh, was part of like a New Year's costume I got at Walmart for a couple bucks. Um, I've been trying to work very hard to do everything on a very low budget. So uh, these are made out of whatever pieces I could find laying around essentially and um, one of the goals that I've been trying to maintain is that every steampunk item does something. So with these handy little goggles um, there's a device that you can't see that's inside mostly because I didn't have time to make one that takes a picture with this lens. Um, I'm the stage manager, which um, means that during rehearsal, I um, keep track of walking for the actors. Um, I make sure that the stage is clean and safe. And um, I deal with any issues that an actor is hurt or sick. Um, and I do that. Um, and then during shows, I call cues. Um, so I let lights and sound know um, when they need to happen. Um, I was really worried at first, not knowing um, how if it was going to be really difficult or not. Uh, and I thought that it would be really constricted and not have a lot of freedom uh, to be in a Shakespeare production. But I realized um, through the direction of Dr. Emily Raleigh that we have a lot of freedom and that we get to portray very fun characters, very charismatic characters. 
um, that have very interesting, unique, and definite personalities that differ from one another. So um, I didn't know how easy and free Shakespeare can really be, but it's a lot of fun. Uh, I think Samuel L. Jackson once said that he always had to have something new on his head or face to distinguish his characters. And, um, so I did it this time. Obviously, you can tell I can't grow any facial hair, um, but I thought Malvolio would try and grow facial hair. Yeah, we have to sit back here. Yeah, for like a half an hour. Yeah, it's gonna be great. I'm excited. Well, of course, everyone forgets that someone is going to forget a line, but I don't think we're gonna do that because we rehearsed so much. This is weird. Think about what it was the first time we sat down to read this script, oh, yeah. and how far we've come. It's a beautiful show and a beautiful play, and you guys are doing a lovely job. So keep it up, break legs tonight, um, and it's going to be an awesome night. Marissa, it's